Ed, how you doing? Hey, how you guys doing? Are we talking now? Yeah, we're, we're talking, talking now. now. We're about to. Uh, yeah. Sabalski, uh, that Red Fox shirt. Major like points. Major points Thank for the you. Red I Fox shirt. That. It almost makes up for the fact you're holding the microphone uh, instead of it being on. Like, what? What are you ringside at a 1970s uh, wrestling event? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> He wishes he was. Yeah, I wish I was. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm 100%. glad that you decided. You know, what the mic, you know what? The mic stand I have doesn't hold this. And I suppose if I just spent the 10 bucks and got a clip for it, uh, I can change it. But yeah. That's okay. This is podcasting. Who has 10 bucks? Um, well, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, as much as I like your Red Fox shirt, thanks for dressing up for the occasion. Well, it was casual <laughs> Thursday for us. Oh, okay. All right. So what do you want from me? All right, let's dive in. It's Ed the Socket. As you can yeah. see, he's ready to go. He's fired up. He's in a mood already. Um, Ed, let's let's start with the Leafs because I just feel like we keep waiting for this team. You know, it's the year. It's the year. It's the year. This window. <laughs> been, yeah. Uh, give, how do you feel about this? <laughs> Any idiot who every year it's like, this is the year, this is, no, it's not. This is last year and the year before and the years before that. Because why would a team spend, why would management ownership spend money to make a team a winner when they can make just as much money or more from a loser? At this point in time, they might as well just put some chimps on the ice. At least then it would be more entertaining and uh, people would stop. The, who, who knows? They may even actually be better. I don't know. Uh, I've never seen chimps play hockey, but it, this is not the year. This is it is never going to be the year. It, it'll be the year when every other team drops out. <laughs> what 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 about the 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 opportunity for a Canadian team to win it? How about Edmonton, Vancouver? Can a Canadian team get to the finals, or is that every year not possible? Well, you know, anything is possible. I can have wings grow up my ass. Anything is possible. The question is whether it's likely. And uh, I'm not really an expert on Vancouver or Edmonton. Uh, I mean, Edmonton, gee, what a team they used to be. I'm old enough to remember that uh, when that was a good team. Uh, and uh, Listen, I think either of those teams stands a better chance than Toronto. Because Toronto makes so much money off its damn licensing of the Leaf logo. They don't need – it's a business. This is a business. Hockey, professional hockey is a business. If you are making money and good money, why do you invest money in something that is not going to bring you any more returns, is only going to make the product that you're producing cost you more? Well, there's no question the Leafs clean, or the Leafs clean up in cash. Uh, who's your team then? Have you, do you have one you cheer for or not? I, you know what? I'm never one for favorites. I mean, okay. I, I always sort of have a sentimental attachment to the Buffalo Sabres. Just oh. because it's Buffalo. I mean, yeah. I have a sentimental attachment to Buffalo from growing up in Toronto, getting all the Buffalo TV stations, the local news stations, and all the cool commercials for the Buffalo, the, the you know the, the Bills and stuff, and all the other teams. So uh, I I have a sentimental attachment to Buffalo, not because I think they're great, but just it reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> So being based in Ontario, uh, where does the sentiment lie? Obviously, there's the the frustration being in the GTA of, of seeing what the Leafs do year after year after year for the last half century. But what about uh, down the 401, up the 416 in the nation's capital? I mean, you talk about futility there. I don't even know why the Ottawa Senators exist. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure who thought that was a good idea. I mean, again, business, right? They make money. So I guess that's why they're there. But there's, there's no great need for a team from Ottawa. I mean, since when uh, does anybody in Ottawa play well as a team? Um, and, and I'm not talking about sports. So why Ottawa? Why, why not Hamilton, for crying out loud already? Why not Hamilton? They can Jim support Bolsilly, a team. Our black bear buddy. Yeah. Jim, do you still have a black bear, Ed? Do you still have a black bear? Do you have a Blackberry still? Do I have a Blackberry? Yeah, I do, but in my museum of uh, old phones, <laughs> which I'm told, by the way, I should get rid of because apparently the batteries get old and volatile. Mm. <laughs> like you. Yes, I am old and volatile. Wait, did you just call me old? 
<laughs> no, you age like fine wine. I'd be curious. What about the Montreal Canadiens? Where do you where do you sit with the Habs this yeah, year? Like what you're seeing, obviously, is they go. Oh, I'm, yeah. Sorry, Commie. Well, that I mean, shit. the Habs are a really competent team, right? And it's embarrassing that there's this you know Leafs Habs rivalry when the Leafs are hapless. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, the Transformers versus the GoBots. Like it's just <laughs> really. This is the, I understand the, the sort of local uh, affiliation rivalry, but it, as, in terms of play, I, I don't see that it is really a rivalry. Hmm. Who's, uh, all right, we're halfway through the year, Ed. You got to pick a team, gun to your head. Who's winning the Stanley Cup, the whole thing? The Leafs. This is the year. <laughs> 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 okay, I tell you, I'm kind of impressed with this whole Robidas Island thing with what they've done to Ryan Reeves. Yeah, I think that's hilarious. Yeah. Ryan Reeves, he's he's not playing up to par, so they get him out of out of the cap, um, putting him on the disabled list, and he's saying, "No, no, I'm I'm okay. Really, I'm." It reminds me of that scene in Monty Python, "Bring Out Your Dead." And the guy's like, I, I, I'm not actually dead. Uh, I'm, not I'm dead. still here. I, I, actually, I'm feeling much better. And that's what it feels like with Reeves. It's like, no, no, I, I, I'm okay. No, no, no. No, no, you can't play. You're not well. Actually, I, I'm doing, shut up. You're not playing. I mean, he's back. He'll be back now. But um, will he play as well as those they called up to replace him? Uh, that remains to be seen, right? Mm -hmm. Klingberg, yeah. too. He's on the island, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, that's got to be an interesting island. I hope it's not like Epstein Island. Then there's a whole other bit of problems we don't want to deal with. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a, that's a different kind of island. Um, hey, listen, before we wrap it, wrap it up, there was something that I have seen you post on social media a few times, and it kind of struck a nerve because five-year-old Savalski remembers going to the theater to see this movie that was supposed to be a kid's movie, but man, it was really freaking creepy. The oh, Black yeah. Hole, the Disney Black Hole, like... For a Dis like I could never um, in a million years imagine Disney making a movie like that for kids today. Like that oh, thing it was, was freaking terrifying. scary. It was terrifying. It was, I mean, it gave, gave kids nightmares to this day. You got a robot that has this slicey, slicey hand that comes out and cuts people to pieces and laser lobotomies. And then the ending, which is just completely freaking inexplicable and a final shot, which is very sinister and haunting. It's like this, this was one weird, weird, like they pull the eyes off somebody and it's like, he's got wires connecting his, his face to the, 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 this visor instead. It was just what, who thought this was a good movie for children? Who thought Disney. it was a good movie, but Disney. who thought it was a good movie for Disney. children? Disney. That, well, that's I've seen the crazy that, but I'm not thing. Gonna, definitely not going to watch it now. It sounds <laughs> terrible. Oh, it's awful. I haven't checked to see if it's actually on Disney plus, but man, like I remember walking out of the theater go, man, that, that wasn't like, well, that, that whole was, ending was so that whole ending spoiler alert, that whole heaven and hell kind of ending. It's like, what, what just happened? You know, it, it, anyway, uh, for those who haven't seen it, uh, you can start listening again now. Uh, for people that uh, that aren't uh, haven't found you yet on social media, where can they find you if uh, they want to check in for more and uh, see more fire uh, brands? Uh, at, 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 at the shut up at, at the sock on uh, Twitter X. I got a Facebook page. I had the sock official or something like that. I have Instagram, but I barely ever use it. Uh, if you really want to find me, Monday to Friday, midnight to five a.m. on ninety four nine The Rock in uh, the GTA, uh, The Rock FM or the rock app. Uh, I have a, a five, five hour show live. I'm live. I take calls and everything called the all night show. And if you go to the rock.fm and look up on demand, you will see previous week's best ofs uh, listed there. So that's where Perfect. you find me. Love it, Ed. All right. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate your time. All right. Thanks, Buddy, guys. I appreciate this. It's been a minute. Nice to catch up again, Ed. Nice to catch up. Talk to you later, guys. Yeah, take care. Yeah. There he Bye -bye. is. Ed the Sock joining us here on the Clearing That's the Breeze right. podcast. Gotta go now.
All right, the Clearing the Crease podcast rolls on. Great catching up with Nigel. Great catching up with Ed the Sock. And hey, just a quick reminder, it's our time for our fan question of the week. And it's real simple. This is where we usually give away a free NHL jersey, courtesy of your friends and ours, Bodog. And all you got to do is reply to this video wherever you're watching it, on social media, on YouTube, wherever. And if we pick your question, yeah, we pick yours. You get yourself a free jersey courtesy of Bodog. And this week's winner is Ryan from Thunder Bay. Ryan at T-Bay says, boys, I've been loving the show. I listen to it whenever I can. And the Barnaby episode was B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Yes, I love how he yeah. talks so much shit about Hashik. My question is this. And he talked a lot of shit. So if you haven't seen it, we highly suggest you checking that one out. Um his, here's Ryan's question. Is there a player that has a bad rep with fans that is actually a good dude in real life? Like, is Brad Marchand a nice guy? Is Chris Chelios a sweetheart? Looking forward to your answers. Uh, stay in one, commie, and the Leafs suck. So there's Ryan. <laughs> uh, who wants to, that, who wants to go here first? Yeah. I'll go. Uh, I would say, <clears throat> I don't know Marchand, but I would be willing to bet that most of the time, the guys that the fans hate or dislike, and I'll even use Matthew Barnaby as an example, a lot of time, those guys, if you meet them in person, they're like the best dudes to be around. They're honest. They're straight up with you. They'll give you the time of day. I think a lot of time, the guys that are that you meet, what is it, like never meet your heroes? That's kind of that sort of thing where it's like, oh, man, I love this guy as a player. Then you meet him, and you're like, oh, Jesus. Now, maybe the expectations were too high. Uh, but I'd say more often, way more often than not, the people that you you hate watching as a fan, you'd end up loving in real life. Yeah, I was going with that. No question. Uh, we had Darcy Tucker on last show. Yeah. Perfect. Another good example. There's a lot yeah. of people that hate him uh, across Canada. Uh, great person. Great teammate. Guy you want around. Brad Marchand is, is one of the sweetest guys um, here in Boston. Yeah. Um, you see he's the first one to – to jump out on the ice with kids or grab a kid, talk to it. Like he is uh, uh, an all time human being. Um, off I, I ca- the- you know, razor razor to that point. Like I remember covering Brad for two world juniors and you know, his family was great. Yeah. Like, to see the personality the that he's become your like, Canadian family. Like, yeah, the best. Like, like great family. And, and Brad, like, yes, he was obviously a shit disturber at that time, but would have never expected him to morph into the personality that he is now. But, uh, oh, no, he is, he is a wonderful, wonderful person. Another yeah. great example and another former guest, Todd Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi, yeah. Oh, yeah. Todd absolutely. Bertuzzi gets shit on all the time. People yeah. hate him in some markets. Todd Bertuzzi is one of the best guys I've ever met. I messaged Todd Bertuzzi, and I played half a second with Todd. It's like not like we have we go way back and play together for a long time, like, I sent a message to Todd or or if you ran into him at the bar or whatever, not just, I'll take myself out of it. If you didn't know him, went up to him and said something to to him at the bar, he'd have a beer with you. He's a great dude. Uh, Uh, No, we we could find more of the people that there are more guys that people think are great that are assholes than we, than we can the other way. For sure. Hey, speaking of players who had a rep, how about this is we're in Oscar season why didn't Sean Avery not get a nomination for his appearance in Oppenheimer, right? Like well, That's right. He's, he's showing up everywhere. I just watched Lioness on uh, Paramount. He had a couple of lines in that, and then all of a sudden, here he is. I'm like, wait a minute. This Oppenheimer is like, there's Matt Damon, there's Cillian Murphy, and then Robert Downey Jr., and oh, yeah, there's Sean Avery. So I haven't uh, seen Oppenheimer. I haven't either. I got to see it, too. I heard it's yeah. good. That's but a three-hour in- commitment. I didn't yeah, even know he was that. doing. I don't know if I've mentioned it before. I, I, there, what's the movie with Mark Wahlberg? Um, it's like Twenty Two. What the hell is it called? Jump I'll Street. One? No, no, it's not Jump Street. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. He's the main star, or whatever. But anyways, at the beginning of the movie, there's this scene where a, a bunch of people get shot. So I had it playing, but I wasn't really watching it. But I could hear it, and I hear a voice, somebody talking, and I'm like. That sounds like Sean Avery. So I'm like, hey, you know, can't be. I didn't know he was doing any acting. You know, you never know what that guy's doing. He's an interesting right. dude. And I'm like, so I had to take a look. And sh- sure as hell, I look. I'm like, that's Sean Avery. He's in the movie. Like just all of a sudden showing up in uh, massive yeah. film it's productions. Cool. Like you talk about a guy who marched to his own drum. Oh, yeah. 
He and, doesn't mess around. And, and and just continues to like <laughs> we should find, find success yeah, in life. Like, good for him. Yeah, he's he's doing something right. So there you go. Brad Marchand, an absolute sweetheart. Todd Bertuzzi, another sweetheart uh, as a couple of examples. Uh, and on that, we, uh, they're giving us the go-home cue here on this edition of the Clearing the Crease podcast. Special thanks to Ed the Sock and special thanks to Nigel Dawes. Oh, and I really feel like we just only scratched the surface with Nigel. So hopefully we can get Nigel back on uh, down the road. But don't forget, uh, hey, we are on the road to the Stanley Cup as this season is just flying along this NHL year. And so make sure that you're making a play each and every night with Bodog.eu. Bodog has you covered with all the action to keep you locked in for every shift all season long. Make a play and score big with Bodog. Guys, always a pleasure. And we will Always. see this again in a couple of weeks from now. So he's Andrew Raycroft. He's Kami. I'm Sabolski. See you next time right here on the Clearing the Priest. Clearing the Priest? What? No? Okay. Clearing the Priest <laughs> podcast powered by Bodog.eu. See ya!